Hey guys, we are trying something a little bit different today and that is recording outside. I hope that I don't get interrupted too much. I can tend to get distracted pretty easily because of the ADHD and also the autistic part of me gets a little bit self-conscious when I'm in public just because, I mean, you guys know how it is. You're constantly hyper aware of how everyone is perceiving you and you could be scared to be perceived in a negative way sometimes but I will try to keep on keeping on with today's video yeah hopefully that today's video is different in a good way obviously I always recommend people to just go outside and connect with nature, connect with the elements, whether that's something as simple as feeling the wind on your skin, the sun warming up your body. Maybe my energy and the energy of where I'm at will translate through the video and give you guys a sense of calm and peace as well. The reason why I'm out here today is because my camera broke on me and I couldn't seem to get it to work, so I am recording today's video on my iPhone. Hopefully I will figure out what's wrong with my camera by the time I record my next week's video. But regardless, here we are and I hope you guys enjoy today's video. So on today's video, I really wanted to reflect on female friendships and some of the observations I made on female friendships. I think I want to make this its own little series where I talk about my social observations that I've made throughout my life. Other topics that correlate with this series would be male friendships, my observations of Asian American communities, observations on medical professionals, observations on therapists, observations on the different generations like boomers, Gen X, millennials, Gen Z, things like that. These are things that I, as an autistic person, am always dissecting and analyzing, but I could never really find like a specified platform where we could really discuss those types of observations together. And these are not really conversations people really have in real life either. And so I thought that it would be extremely, extremely validating for me to go on ahead and find a way to verbalize a lot of these thoughts that I have and observations that I make and upload it on my platform that I created in order for us to continually discuss these types of things together. With that being said, of course, because these are social observations that I made, I'm not intending for these videos to say that I'm correct in any sort of capacity. This is just a conversation for us to have. My Mercury is Aquarius, so I feel like when it comes to communicating, I like to just be very open and not necessarily commit to any one sort of stance. It's just exploration, right? We're all just talking about what we think, what we believe in, simultaneously are open to hearing someone else out and resonating with it, even if it might contradict or be different from what you had originally thought of. I'm going to read what I wrote first and then dive into the nitty gritty of this topic because I cannot, for the life of me, memorize this and recite it or else it's just going to seem very robotic and unnatural. I've always felt a discomfort and disconnect with female friendships. This isn't because I don't connect with other girls and women. If anything, I bond more with other women. But it's more so about the many atomic ways girls are taught to socially interact with each other that always confused me. Being nice to each other when you may actually feel upset, basing how you treat someone off of how others may treat them, looking like each other, wearing the same clothes, same hairstyles, talking the same, doing the same hobbies, eating the same food, watching the same shows. And as we grow, these superficial ways we copy each other begins to translate into more subjective ways like our lifestyle, our growth patterns, healing, failures, and our successes. 
we become so detached from our own self that we grow to fear our own happiness and success because it may challenge your friend who may be struggling. We become more open to share and wallow in our own sufferings in order to gain comfort through our friend's pity and empathy because venting about how we may struggle is also sending an underlying message of, I'm not a threat to you. You do not need to compete with me. So I started to reflect back on a lot of my prominent female friendships throughout my life and I've always had a lot of discomfort confusion and disconnect with the female friendships that I had. I remember there was this new girl that moved into our town and school in I think second or third grade and I remember the teacher was asking the classroom if anyone would volunteer to show this new girl around and be her friend and things like that and immediately I was the first one to raise my hand and say I will be her friend I will show her around you know, that Aries Leo quality came out of me and I just wanted to like bring this girl under my wing and be her companion. Naturally, I'm actually a very outgoing, warm person, but I think throughout time as I learned how to be more socially appropriate, that's when I started to become extremely introverted, coupled with the fact that I'm very sensitive to other people's energies and also have a lot of sensory sensitivity. So needing to be alone is essential for my well-being but to my core the nature that I was born with is that I'm a very open outgoing person that likes to connect with other people and so I became quick friends with this girl we were essentially best friends we would hang out all the time talk all the time spend all our time together at school very quickly I began to feel an extreme discomfort with this girl because I noticed that she started to copy me in so many different ways wearing the same shoes wearing the same clothes talking the same way following me everywhere not being able to make her own decisions I mean I didn't dissect this at the time but I'm dissecting it now I think it's because I felt like I was almost losing my sense of identity because another person was taking it from me if that makes sense I felt uncomfortable because I felt like this person, this human being that is their own separate self was not expressing that and instead was trying to become me. And I really did not like that. I didn't like feeling as if I was interacting with a shell of a person rather than themselves. Which is really odd because when I reflect on female friendships in general, whether that's through little girls or through teenagers or through adults, I feel like what makes women bond is becoming like each other and imitating each other. You know, having the same hobbies, dressing the same way, having the same hairstyles, going to the same daycare. I feel like women are very much so comfortable around having the same type of lifestyle as their other female counterparts and they feel a sense of threat and challenge when their female counterparts do something in a different way. But likewise, we're also very critical of each other and annoyed and frustrated with each other when our female counterparts are imitating us. You know, how often do you hear other women apologize for wanting to wear the same shirt as you or get the same thing that you have because they don't want you to be offended that they're copying you, right? So there's that very odd disconnect and dichotomy with this specific topic of copying each other and mirroring each other. But going back to what I was talking about, I felt extremely put off by this person essentially imitating my identity in all these different types of ways. I remember at the time feeling this desperate need to detach from this person because I don't like feeling as if I am losing myself, if that makes sense. It's so odd because I feel like I crave connection, but as soon as I feel like I'm losing a sense of identity and autonomy, I just immediately get this instinct to run away. This happens when groups of people or cliques want me to become a part of their community. I always get the sense of 
as soon as I'm feeling as if I'm assimilating, I don't feel right and I feel uncomfortable and I want to get away. This happens even in one-on-one -on -one connections. I feel like more so in my younger years than now because I feel like as you grow older and into adulthood, generally speaking, people are a little bit more comfortable being their own self and not copying every aspect of each other. But this was a very prominent thing when I was a little girl. And even growing into teenagehood is just everyone was copying each other. All these girls were copying each other and so threatened when you weren't exactly like each other. And I feel like it's generally a common theme when I reflect back on my childhood friendships, female friendships, that I always found a way to not be friends with the girls that I bonded with because there always came a time within the dynamic where I just felt a sense of confusion as to what was happening and an ultimate sense of discomfort that made me not want to deal with it anymore and I feel like autism relates to this because I could never really put a finger on what it was that made me uncomfortable because essentially I wasn't really interpreting things in a way where I felt like I could communicate it to them because I didn't know if it was even accurate because a lot of my interpretations that I picked up on, things that I was sensing were just things that were so underlying, something that you could just feel but you couldn't describe, right? And sometimes if you were to describe it to someone, you could tell that it sounds insane and it could be something that someone could totally discount and say, you know, that's not true. I deny it. And then it just becomes awkward. So instead, you just want to keep it to yourself and disappear into the background. But I feel like this is probably such a common experience for autistic women and autistic girls in general, just hitting these points within friendships of being completely confused because what you feel doesn't necessarily reflect on what you're experiencing physically with another person face to face. And then you have these moments of self-doubt where you're like, I feel like what I'm feeling is true and accurate, but I don't know if it really is because a lot of the times people deny you know those underlying truths because it's scary to face and so it becomes a thing where you don't want to keep connecting with them on these surface level interactions that are not truthful and are based in lies but you can't necessarily confront and connect with them with the truth because they don't want to accept it or talk about it with you. I feel like a lot of the copying and mirroring of each other stems from misogynistic patriarchal systems, right? This general idea that women are not able to live and succeed without their male counterparts. In that aspect, we are all competing to be able to make a living. We are all competing for the attention and affection of men, right? And so that translates into this mentality of needing to not only meet the expectations of what women are supposed to be like, but exceed those expectations in our own ways. And it begins to build the sense of competition within each other, but also this toxic sense of needing each other at the same time to survive because we can't survive on our own. We either need to survive within a community of women. Either way, what that communicates, I feel like, is you are not allowed to be yourself. You are not allowed to succeed as your own person you have to constantly be comparing yourself to other women, other men, and seeing whether or not you add value to that or exceed the expectations of that. So you are essentially a valuable person that other people need in their lives. And if this isn't something superficial like your job or the way you look, it's another thing of can I offer something emotionally to you am I able to heal your trauma am I able to meet your needs am I able to become your mother or the mother of your children you know I feel like intrinsically women have to exceed on so many different levels in order to feel as if they're appreciated and needed I feel like women are not allowed to just exist we are 
supposed to be a need to another person or a need to society to be valid essentially. And I think this is also why women are so tied up in what other women do all the time and perceiving another woman as either an ally or a threat. I feel like, yes, when I say it out loud, it sounds so animalistic, but to be honest, it's freaking true, right? I'm sure you guys agree with me. Of course, women aren't thinking to themselves, you're either my ally or threat. What they kind of realize is just, am I cool with this person or am I not? Do I vibe with them or do I not? But what it ultimately is, is are you a threat or are you my ally? Are you someone that succeeds more than me? Or are you going to make me feel bad about where I'm at with my life? Are you prettier than me? Or can I feel good about myself because you're a little bit uglier than me? Are you richer than me? Is your boyfriend more successful than my boyfriend? Um, are you skinnier than me? Are you stronger than me? Can you cook better than me? You know, there's all of these ways in which women use each other to... And this is just not a healthy way of being because we all are different people. We all have different strengths and weaknesses. You cannot compare yourselves to another person and expect yourself to succeed and fail alongside their own trajectory. And you cannot expect someone else to have the same trajectory as you. I feel like this translates into all these little microaggressions that we really don't dissect enough are you a threat or are you my ally translates into things like when I find happiness in a healthy relationship, do I feel comfortable sharing it with my girlfriends or do I have to hide it because all my other girlfriends don't seem to have healthy relationships or trauma with their relationships. And so because of that, I don't want to talk about my success in relationships because I feel like I'm making them feel bad about themselves or I'm scared that they're going to say things that brings down my happiness and makes me feel a sense of paranoia with my healthy relationship because they're planting seeds of doubt in my mind. Or likewise, I feel like I have to constantly be more upfront about the things I'm struggling with because girls are so down to comfort each other and encourage each other through our sufferings because internally it makes us feel better about ourselves when someone else is at their low point. I've had so many female friendships where I learned to not share the things that I'm happy about because a girlfriend will say things like, oh, that's too good to be true. There has to be something wrong with him. There was also a time when I was going through my last breakup where my last partner and I were extremely close. We lived together. We had a pretty close bond. Despite the issues we had, we had a really close bond. And so when we went through our breakup, all these girls started coming in to message me and say like, it's gonna be okay, Irene. Take your time to heal before you date, stuff like that. And I know their intentions were good, but this is where it could really start to become toxic because there were moments where I was telling them, I'm okay, I'm good. I know it might be hard for you to believe, but it took me only one or two weeks to really process and mourn the breakup, but I'm genuinely in a really good place. This feels right to me. I feel the sense of relief and release and hope to move forward in my life and hope to move forward to meet my next soulmate that I know is going to be meant for me, right? And it's almost like they didn't want to accept that. And they were like, I know that's what you feel like right now, but I just want you to know that if you're not ready to date, you don't have to. And they would go into like how it's been two years since they last dated and they're still processing their breakup. And I'm just like, I understand that you need time to process your breakup and relationships and dating to you right now is not good for you, but what makes you think that that is also something that I'm going through? Like, it really irks me when someone doesn't allow you to experience your own life and your own reality because they think that their reality is applicable to everyone else. It really irks me when someone tells you their experience and the other person doesn't just accept it to be true and understand that everyone is experiencing things differently. When I say things like, it feels right to me, I feel good, and I feel ready to move on and date again, I don't understand why that's so hard for another person to accept. There were moments 
after breakups where I needed five years to recover from the breakup and to feel ready to date again. And likewise, in my last breakup, even though that was technically the longest relationship I had and the most close relationship I had, it only took me two weeks to get over that breakup and feel ready to move on and date again. Everyone's growth happens so differently at different points in your life. And I don't like that women kind of expect each other to grow at the same pace as each other. There's a way to support each other and empathize with each other without projecting your own crap onto them. It felt so wrong to me to have to keep explaining to this girlfriend of mine that, you know, I am okay. I am okay. I can date again. It feels right to me. It's almost like I felt gaslit or something. I got to a point where I just wanted to say, do you want me to not be okay? Because that's what it feels like. I feel like it's not their intention to feel like they're holding you back, but that's what ultimately happens a lot of the times. I feel like women are so quick to bond with each other over shared trauma rather than guiding each other and being there for each other through problems, but also genuinely celebrating another woman's success when she's experiencing it. It's like you always hear from other women, when's the next shoe going to drop or when's something going to go wrong? Or like they only really give you attention when something is going wrong. I always see other women being scared to talk about when they're actually happy because they're scared their other women counterparts are going to somehow insert doubt into it or not be happy for them or it'll trigger them to not feel good about themselves and of of course, if you care and love them, you don't want them to feel bad about themselves. But we're so intertwined into each other's lives and we lose our identity so much that that's what happens when someone else is experiencing something different from you. You tend to just feel a sense of insecurity with yourself. Whereas if you're all just your own self and connected to each other because you love each other, whether or not someone is having a good or bad experience in their life doesn't have to affect you or make a difference for you because you're your own person, right? You could be happy and your friend could struggle and you could still support them. Or likewise, you could be struggling and your friend could be happy and successful and you could still feel happy for them and understand that your time will come too when the time is right for you, things like that. When I reflect on my best female friendship that is also my longest female friendship, what I find makes our friendship so successful is the fact that we give each other space to be our own selves and to live our own lives. So what this means is there's been many years in my life where I experienced profound mental health problems and trauma, right? Me and my best friend are so different in the ways where she comes from a very healthy and supportive family background. For the most part, she's had long, successful, stable relationships, whereas I come from a very unstable family background with a lot of domestic violence and abuse. All of my relationships have been very short-lived, um, and I also experienced a very abusive relationship with a past partner. And so we have very different life experiences, right? I remember I hit a point within our friendship where I felt a sense of resentment and bitterness because I felt like as I was struggling so much in my life and just not in a good place, you know, I had fairly severe depression when I was friends with this girl and she had a really good support system consistently. And I would always compare myself to her and I would always think to myself, why am I struggling so much? Essentially, what I realized was that she was a mirror to myself in a way where I felt like I was constantly seeing the way my life was failing and the way I was failing through her. And it wasn't that she was making me feel this way, you know, and that's the sad part is that she was such a supportive, loving, f stable friend, perhaps the only stable thing I had in my life. But because she was in such a good place all the time, it made me feel even worse about myself. And so eventually I got to a point where I couldn't be friends with her anymore because I didn't want to constantly be reminded of how much I was struggling. And so 
I think I spent a year or two not talking to this friend and I feel bad because this whole time she just didn't know what was happening and why I didn't talk to her. Years later, she finally reached out to me and said that she missed me and in our friendship. She didn't know what was what happened to make me stop talking to her, but she wishes that I could just tell her so she could apologize and that she just wants to be friends with me again. And I remember when I read this text, I just sobbed immediately and I could sob again. I'm so thankful for this friend. Because I feel like that's the hard thing about friendships. It's so weird because friendships are so profoundly significant in our lives, but it's it could be so confusing because we're all just humans trying to, our best to grow and learn and sometimes at certain points in our lives we're just not meant to be around a certain person and it's not because we don't love them and it's not because we don't want to be around them but it's just you could be in such different places and I feel like I was in such a dark place that I could not function next to her because she was such a light you know and I can admit to that. I, at the time, was not ready for love and healthy connections. I just needed to find myself. I needed to have the dark night of my soul. I needed to hit rock bottom and pull myself back out of that self-pity and depression in order to be a friend to her as well and allow her to be a friend to me. But a big reason why I think me and her get along so well throughout all these years of growth and evolution is because she never lets me affect her. She's always very steady in where she's at in her life. She's a Capricorn, you guys. I feel like Capricorn and Pisces are just like this. I love how stable she is. It's so grounding to me and I need that, you know? But if I'm going through a bad time, it doesn't affect her. It's not gonna ruin her day or her week or make her feel depressed. And likewise, if I'm going through a hard time, she's not gonna hold back on sharing the good parts of her life and the success that she's had. She could still share that with me because that's what she's going through, right? And likewise, she doesn't feel the need to bring herself down to meet me where I was at. I could still comfortably vent to her and, and all that stuff without feeling as if I'm negatively affecting her or bringing her down because she could still empathize with me and say, you know, that sucks or I'm sorry you're going through that without having to fully take that on herself. And that translates into moments like right now where I'm at such a good place in my life and have been for so long and I could genuinely share all of my happiness all of the nuances of my experiences and she could give me that empathy that feedback she could celebrate with me and go through life with me without having it affect the trajectory of her life and likewise i could do that for her if she's ever struggling or going through it i don't feel the need to completely disconnect myself from my life in order to be there for her and show that i care i could still be happy for myself and be in a good place or wherever i'm at and support her without her needing to be offended or all of these weird like I feel like with women's connections, generally speaking, there's all of these like underlying fears of what you say or do may mean that's not directly communicated through your actions. Like, is this enough for them or are they going to take it the wrong way? I feel like that's why women are constantly complimenting each other too. Oh, your hair looks nice. Oh, you look good. Oh, I like that shirt. Yes, to a certain extent, we may mean those compliments, but I feel like underneath those compliments what we're actually trying to communicate is i'm your ally i'm not a threat and the only way i could express that to you is by fawning and making you feel good about yourself but i feel like that is the very reason why a lot of autistic girls and women struggle with female friendships because when we're not constantly bubbly or complimenting another person fawning after another person they take the absence of that as a microaggression or as you stating that you are not an ally to them and you do not support them and you do not like them there's so many times where girls 
girls and women discount me and think I'm not interested in being friends with them or I'm mean or I'm a bitch or I'm cold just because I'm not constantly complimenting them or smiling, doing all of these like weird things, which is the only way you can express interest in a friendship or allyship to another person. There's been so many times where even if I do make an effort, I'm still misunderstood because my tone of voice is not that bubbly. Like I sound very monotone and that could be taken as sarcasm or something or being disingenuous or not being excited about something. And the same goes for my facial expressions, you know? And that could be very disheartening to feel that disconnect of always being misunderstood, even when in your heart of hearts, you're wanting to connect with another woman, but you're constantly being told otherwise. And it's just really discouraging because you learn that who you are is constantly going to be misunderstood. And so in order to be understood, ironically, you have to be another person it just like doesn't make sense and it becomes so tiring and I think that's why a lot of autistic people end up becoming hermits because ultimately we learn that in order to conserve our energy we have to be alone because being alone means you can at least be yourself and you don't have to pretend to be all these different aspects of a person which is essentially becoming the person in front of you in order for them to understand you because the only way for someone to understand you is for you to be them because the only thing that they can understand is themselves I feel like the more we fake our personas to mirror each other, the more we lose our individual senses of self. The more we lose our sense of unique self-expression, the less we can understand each other for who we are. There's so many times where when I meet holistic people, I think to myself, are they the autistic one? Because I feel like holistic people a lot of the times have more social deficits than autistic people because Here's the thing, here's what I think. I feel like autistic people understand individuals better than holistic people, but I feel like holistic people understand themselves and therefore grander social constructs that reflect that one specific identity a lot better. And because one is the norm, the autistic person is considered the one with the social deficit. But a lot of the times when it comes to that one person that just does things differently, the autistic person's the first one to immediately understand them for who they are. Whereas the holistic people are like the ones that are put off and confused because they're like, oh, this person's different and that doesn't make sense to us and is weird and we don't like it, you know? I think this is a good reminder to always find ways to be your authentic self even if someone doesn't understand it because a lot of the times even if they may not communicate it to you i feel like holistic people or other neurodivergent people are just craving to express their authentic sense of self but they just don't have a safe space to do so and this is why i think neurodivergent people autistic people are such a blessing because because of our social deficit we can't help but to be our own selves and this is a reminder for those of you who camouflages all the time or really well let go of those masks let go of the need to camouflage because when you could stand confidently in your own unique identity you also offer another person permission to stand in their own unique identity as well if there's anything we need more of is encouraging each other to be ourselves and as I say that, people are walking by giving me dirty looks of confusion and I am going to keep talking through it. And this is a reminder for you to just be yourself and do not be afraid to do that. You have a place in this world. You are allowed to be your own person. With that being said, thank you guys for watching today's video. I will see you guys on next week's video. Bye guys.